All right, hi everybody, my name is Julianne Shi. Um, I'm part of the Broad Institute's GCC, or Genome Characterization Center, and today I'll be talking about somatic copy number alterations and aneuploidy events in uveal melanoma. Um, so this AWG actually started uh, fairly recently, in October 2014, and we're having our first face-to-face -face tomorrow, uh, so we'll have a lot more integrative analysis after that. Um, and so while today I will bring in some of the other platforms, uh, this talk will mostly focus on copy number an analysis. All right, so just a quick introduction to uveal melanomas. Um, the uvea is a layer of your eye uh, right underneath the, your sclera, uh, which is the white part of your eye. Uh, and it consists of the iris, the cilia ciliary body, um, and the choroid. So these tumors are rare, but they're also the most common intraocular cancer and occur at a rate of about six per million per year. So what's important to note is that they're clinically distinct from cutaneous melanoma, um, and over 70% of UVM patients actually develop liver metastasis as the first and only site, despite less than 2% having clinically detectable metastases at time of presentation. These are also very molecularly distinct from, from cutaneous melanomas. Um, they don't have BRAF mutations, uh, and instead have uh, uh, GNAQ and GNA11 mutations, um, as well as about 80% of metastasizing tumors specifically having BAP1 inactivating mutations as seen in, in papers in the past. So uh, currently the most prog common prognostic test in uh, the clinic is a 15 gene classifier uh, that developed by Castle Biosciences that predicts metastatic risk fairly accurately. So there's actually been quite a bit of work um, done in, in aneuploidy and uveal melanomas in the past, um, and in particular, this one paper from 2008 uh, finds that about 50% of, uh, of tumors have this chromosome three loss, um, and you can see white denotes a loss, uh, whereas black denotes a gain in this, in this heat map. Um, and so chromosome three loss of heterozygosity is a marker for metastasis as well as poor prognosis. Um, and they also found over here that higher aneuploidy tumors tended to have worse survival than uh, those tumor tumors with lower aneuploidy. And so compare that to the TCGA UVM cohort. We have 79 tumors uh, using, uh, looking at copy number with Affymetrix SNP6 chips, and you can see that this, this uh, overview looks fairly similar to what's been seen in the past. So you have, you know, this, um, about half of our tumors also have a loss in chromosome three, and the uh, patterns in chromosome six, as well as eight, also look very similar. So before I get back into copy number, um, the copy number landscape of UVM, I'd like to show some significantly uh, mutated genes in this tumor type. <coughs> so there aren't a whole lot, um, and underneath this blue line right Underneath this blue line right here, uh, you, you know, you start dropping off in, in terms of, of power. Um, but above that, we do have, we do see GNAQ and GNA11 mutations um, in 73 out of 79 total tumors. Uh, and then there's SF3B1, EIF1AX, uh, and BAP1 mutations. Um, and these have al also been seen in uh, previous whole exome studies uh, done on UVL uveal melanomas. So I did hierarchical unsupervised clustering uh, using just the copy number alter uh, amplifications as well as deletions, and as you might expect, they separate very nicely into two main groups. So you have cluster one, uh, which is on the top, which does not have uh, loss in chromosome three, and then you have on the bottom cluster two or subtype two, uh, which, which is defined by this chromosome three loss. Um, but within these two clusters, you can actually separate them further into uh, 1A and 1B on the top, where 1A is very, very quiet in terms of somatic copy number alterations, and uh, 1B is uh, characterized by a gain in 6P as well as 8Q. On the bottom, um, 2B is characterized by a very high gain in 
chromosome 8Q, uh, as well as just overall increased aneuploidy. So there's also a very striking somatic mutation pattern here. Um, and so moving from, oops. So moving from the left to the right, uh, you can see that, that once again, 73 out of 79 of these tumors have either GNAQ or GNA11 mutations. These are fairly uh, mutually exclusive, although not entirely mutually exclusive. Um, and then you have EIF1AX mutations, 10 of which are found solely in, in cluster 1A. Um, SF3B1 mutations, uh, of which there are 18, 13 are found in cluster 1B. And for BAP, and all 16 BAP mutations are actually found in either subtype 2A or 2B. Um, and this is, this is uh, particularly interesting because BAP1 is, is located on chromosome 3, and so all of these mutations are actually uh, homozygous mutations. So here are a couple of clinical correlations to the copy number subtypes. Um, epithelial tumors, which tend to have uh, poor prognosis and are, are, are found more commonly in, in subtype 2A and subtype 2B, uh, whereas spindle tumors are, t are, are found more commonly in 1A and 1B. Um, subtype, subtype 2 tumors um, are, also, are also found uh, more commonly in the ciliary body uh, as well as the choroid, whereas uh, Subtype 1 tumors are found mostly in the choroid. And most importantly, subtype 1A and 1B tumors have significantly better survival than, than 2A and 2B tumors. So the difference here between, uh, between 2A and 2B uh, is, as you can see, not, not significant. But there's at least a hint of a su suggestion that 2B, which is again characterized by increased aneuploidy and a very high 8Q gain uh, may actually have worse overall survival than uh, cluster 2A. So as you can see here, um, there's not much chromosomal instability in uveal melanomas compared to a lot of other solid tumor types. Um, and, and it's been suggested that this is because they occur in your eye, which is a, you know, obviously a very sensitive area, and so uh, people tend to catch these tumors early. Um, but also with 79 tumors, we don't have a whole lot of power uh, to, de to detect rare events. So these amplification peaks here are, are very large and actually encompassed in uh, my, my arm level ampl uh, an analyses. Um, but there are a couple of interesting deletions specifically on chromosome three. And so the ones I've listed here are all exonic um, and found solely in subtype 2 tumors, which means that they actually cause a homozygous deletion uh, in, in these tumors. Um, and furthermore, they're all mutually exclusive, including a one additional BAP1 homozygous deletion. Um, but there, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot, a lot of literature out there about those three genes. Okay, so BAP1 mutations, as I've mentioned before, uh, are found predominantly in metastasizing tumors, and in our cohort are found only in subtype 2 tumors. So uh, germline BAP1 mutations are, have also been previously found in, um, in families and, and individuals that are predisposed to, to, uh, to cancer such as mesothelioma and uveal melanoma, um, but none of these are actually seen in our cohort. So 12 out of 16 of the BAP1 mutations that we, uh, that we see are, are either frame shift, uh, nonsense, or splicite mutations. And so theoretically, we should see a drastic decrease in BAP1 expression in these tumors. And so I started with a quick sanity check, um, looking just at the BAP1 expression between cluster one and, and cluster two uh, uveal melanomas. And so you can see here that the, you know, within, BAP, within clusters 2A and 2B, which again have BAP1 loss of heterozygosity, there's a significant decrease in, in BAP1 expression. But when we just zoom in on, on subtype 2 um, and look at the BAP1 expression uh, 
by mutation status looking at those you know that are um, that are wild type or have a missense mutation versus the the ones that should theoretically have a truncating mutation. Um, it's harder to know what's going on with these mutations. Um, for for one, not you know not all of these truncated mutations have a significantly lower um, significantly lower BAP1 expression. But if you, even if we choose to look just at this bottom half of the truncated mutations, um, there's still some evidence that there are some uh, some some BAP1 alterations um, or silencing that we're missing in the in the LOH uh, tumors. So I ran Absolute, which is um, an algorithm that infers tumor purity, poity, subclonality, and whole genome doubling status, as well as generates an absolute copy number profile for uh, each each homologous chromosome or allele. And so you can see here that um, the, back, the majority of UVMs are very high purity uh, with a median of 0.95. And here I've plotted ploidy um, versus whole genome status. And so you know most of the t these tumors are near diploid with a, a median ploidy of 2.02. Um, but there are five specific uh, five tumors that are whole genome doubled. Um, and out of these, four of them are in, in subtype 2A and actually have a chromosome 3 isodicomy. And so here's a quick figure um, showing you how this could arise. So starting with this, this diploid tumor on the left, um, at for whatever reason, it loses this one uh, red allele leading to a, a loss of heterozygosity in chromosome 3. And when it whole genome doubles, you get a, uh, an isodicomy of chromosome 3 and, and a tetrasomy in all these other chromosomes. And lastly, I'd like to end on a sneak peek at what the overall landscape of uh, the TCGA platforms looks like um, in, in comparison with the somatic copy number alteration clusters. Um, and so this is still work in progress. Um, but it seems right now that methylation and, um, and messenger RNA expression correlate extremely well with, with, somatic, uh, with our, our clusters. Um, and and uh, in addition, looking at just the mutations, um, EIF1AX mutations are found, again, solely in, in cluster 1A. Um, and, S and BAP1 mutations are found solely in clusters uh, 2A and 2B. This is, a, this is extremely striking because uh, these clusters are, um, are determined solely on looking at somatic copy number alterations. Um, and yet, all of these other platforms correlate extremely well uh, with this. Okay, so just a summary. Um, so somatic copy number alteration clusters are consistent with methylation and messenger RNA clusters, um, and each of them is actually defined by particular somatic mutations and are very predictive of uh, what mutation will be f would be found in a specific in any given tumor. So 1A um, was the the most quiet in terms of copy number alterations. Uh, they also have better survival and, <coughs> and tend to have EIF1AX mutations. 1B was characterized by a gain both in 6P as well as HQ gain, um, had better survival as well as SF3B1 mutations. Cluster 2A uh, was characterized by a loss of heterozygosity in chromosome 3, worse survival and BAP1 mutations, uh, specifically truncating mutations. And uh, cluster 2B also had loss of heterozygosity in chromosome 3, but are additionally characterized by high 8Q gain, as well as increased aneuploidy. Um, and this seems to have the worst survival out of the, the four clusters and uh, tend to be also BAP1 mutated. So what does this ultimately mean? Um, so we know now that, that copy number subtype 1 and 2 look extremely different in multiple platforms, including methylation and messenger RNA. 
Um, and, and we also know that chromosome three loss of heterozygosity is highly predictive of metastasis and worse overall survival. And so perhaps in the clinic, uh, copy number subtype one and subtype two patients uh, could be actually treated differently. Um, going forward, this, this AWG will be integrating all of the different platforms into uh, one cohesive story about uveal melanoma that hopefully will have, will impact patient care in the future. So I'd like to thank Andy Cherniak for working with me on uh, the copy number analysis, um, Julian Hess, who's also at the Broad, for uh, mutation analysis, and uh, Beta and Syriac for leading the group, as well as the rest of the UVM analysis working group. All right, thank you. Hi, very nice talk. Um, two questions. So number one, the EIF, one AX mutation seems sort of mutually exclusive to the SF3B1. And one is initiation, involving translation initiation, one is splicing. Do you know the, any, any crosstalk? Um, seems like mutually exclusive to me in, in, in terms of the distribution. Uh, right, I'm not actually familiar with the, the biology behind this, um, but yes, they are, they are mutually exclusive with one exception, um, and they're all found in the uh, non-monosomy three tumors. Yeah, and, and the other thing is that it's three mutation, chromosome three, um, like clear cell kidney cancer, there are multiple tumor suppressors lost in addition to BEV1, including BHL, PBRM1, and CD2. You didn't see those mutation in your cohort, right? Right, we, we didn't see them significantly mutated. Uh, it's unclear, I, I haven't checked if there are, you know, just one-off mutations, um, but we, we should take a look at that. Yeah, because w when we saw a subset of clear cell patients that have SETI2 mutation and some of them have SF3B mutation, they saw a mutual exclusive, so almost very similar to here. So I don't know whether there's any. I might have, I might have missed this, but can you explain a little, a little bit more about the cohort? Or were they all metastatic samples that you were analyzing? So again, um, it's, it's difficult to tell because within, in the clinical um, data, there, so, so as I mentioned, um, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to determine whether a tumor is eventually gonna be metastatic at time of presentation. And so in you know, the clinical annotation file, uh, there are only about two or three um, metastatic patients, but you do see some of these patients eventually go on to die of, uh, you, of met uh, metastatic uveal melanoma. So it, it's, it's kind of unclear um, which of these patients are actually metastatic. So have you compared your, um, your classification versus the gene signature that's currently in the clinic, and does it do better? Um, so I, I haven't checked that, but the, my, the mRNA, uh, the mRNA group, um, I believe, has, has checked that, and it looks pretty similar to what they see. Um, and so, you know, look, just looking at the third bar to, from, the, from the right, uh, those, you know, overlap very well with the somatic copy number alteration clusters. And, and finally, you mentioned that GNAQ and GNA11, there were a few co-occurring mutations. Did you notice anything with regards to the type of mutations? Were they the non-hotspot mutations, or did those patients do worse, do you know? Um, I, I don't know that off the top of my head. Thank you, Julian. Um, I'm going to introduce our last speaker for this morning, Nicholas Stransky, and uh, from Blueprint Medicine. He's going to talk about the landscape of driver kinases, uh, driver kinase fusions in cancer. So, um, a couple of announcements. Uh, we are going to have lunch after this talk, and the poster viewing will start at 1.30. We will come back to this room at hopefully 225.